People tend to underestimate how rich and complex of a sound Metallica's tone was on the Black Album. A lot of people, when you're browsing online, they always say it's just a 57 on a V30 cabinet Mesa with a Mark IIc Plus uh, with EMGs. And there you go, that's Metallica's tone. Just scoop the mids, bro, and you're good to go. But it's actually so much more rich and complex than people realize. And here's a clip of Bob Rock explaining. Interesting, interestingly enough, uh, that is the only other amp that was used on James sound on the black album is that we added the jose marshall in rather than in queuing mid-range which is something that i've always done it's kind of like get the amps that have the voice right we added a little bit just a hair of that and it brought a lot of the face that you hear on what i call face presence the mid-range that you know it's kind of the scoop sound with the boogies etc that they used the marshall added that just one little kind of hint of mid-range at the right volume to the overall sound that made a huge difference so it's almost like using you know just a different color and and kind of that's how i've gotten guitar sounds ever since i you know got into using two different types of amplifiers or whatever to me it's the only way because you know every amplifier has a certain you know because of you know through the years just buying so many <laughs> you know you kind of figure out what what is great and what's great about you know fenders marshalls high watts you know just other different kind of amplifiers um and you know from certain eras they they have this tone and i've always thought you know like when you first start engineering and recording it's always about eq and stuff and compression what i realized no, it's Mike, Mike Choice, Mike select, Selection, you know, the right speaker boxes, the right heads, the combination, you know, the guitars. Everything aside from EQ is the most important thing. EQ is the last thing. And most, mostly the EQ that I use now is always in the mix, and that's to make the mix work. You know, most of the, the stuff that I recorded is pretty much flat, you know. You mentioned you use a 57 and a 421 for years and years, as well as like an 87 for a room mic. Is that something, do you often put a room up with those two close mics? Um, well, yeah, and this is, uh, you know, depending, but really where I got the most out of a room mic was working with James. Like I always recorded a room mic, but it was always very distant. So what it did is it added a depth, and that's an old trick that everybody's used for a long time. But the 57 and the 421 are pretty much, well, I can tell you a whole pile of stars, but let's finish with the room mic. With Hetfield, basically the, it's 421s and 57s on the cabs. And of course we spent, you know, finding the sweet spots on the speakers, the best cabinets, the, you know, everything. And then basically, you know, if you get the right gain, with both those even gain on both those mics, you pretty much got the sound just like that, okay? But part of his sound is is what he calls crunch. And crunch isn't the crunch that I thought it was. I always thought crunch was kind of in the top end. His was this the bump in the bottom, which is kind of a resonant frequency. Mm. And so um, it's the way he plays. And, you know, he just likes this certain thing that is in a sound so i had never done that before so what we ended up happening ended up happening is what i heard with what they had done before i heard that it was a distant mic and that's how you get that kind of thing so what we did is we ended up building a room at one-on-one -on -one with mic stands and plywood and i moved the 87 around for days and placed it height distance and and we moved the panels in and out, and we found one spot that was the bump that's about three or 400 cycles that just went, he, it kind of has this sound like it's a gunk, mm. and that's part of the sound, right? When he mutes, palm mutes, mm -hmm. it just makes this resonance. And as soon as we hit that, we didn't touch it. That's the sound on the Black Album. Now, the interesting thing is when you add that, all the kind of like 
sizzle in the top, the harshness with the boogies, etc. It went away because the way because there's just a hint of room, not distance, right? Pretty close. But so there's a little bit, so it just got rid of a bit of the the irritating stuff in the top end, and that's why from top to bottom that sound is just so magnificent because it's it was shaped with microphones, amplifiers for a long time and it took us like a week to get that sound. You know? Wow. And and it was all about doing the work, right? Spending the time getting everything right. And really, you know, him telling me what he wanted and me just trying my best to kind of, you know, translate what he was hearing. 